In this series, I'm gonna take you through a drive of the 540. BMW of Wesley Chapel gives us the 2023 BMW 540i sedan in dark graphite metallic over Canberra beige perforated Syntec. We're gonna go into the inside to show you the amenities. I'm going to do some comparisons against the Benz, the Audi, Genesis to show you what the 540 is as a package and a daily use. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. I'm gonna go over all the specs and details starting now. The BMW 540i sedan is going to be a step up from the 530 and it's around $7,000. What are you starting off with? Active kidney grille with the chrome surrounding it, brushing into your LED headlamps and daytime runnings. And on the lower, you'll get the gloss black for your side curtain with the chrome that integrates into some more gloss black in the center. Clearance around five inches. The Genesis G80 will be about 5.5 inches and that will have the best ground clearance. Weight distribution will actually be the best in the 530 at a 50.9, 49. 9.1. When you up the game to the 540, it's going to go to 52.7, 43.3, which is still going to be better than Audi, better than the Benz. It's going to be a little bit less than the Genesis G70 because that's at a 51.49. And it's funny because if you go to an M550i or even an M5, the weight distribution doesn't get any better. A length at 195.8 inches with a wheelbase at 117.1 inches, a double wishbone multi-link aluminum front suspension, integral V multi-link aluminum rear suspension. 19 inch multi-spoke alloy wheels, the disc reading behind it at 13.7 inches. The rear is at 13 inches, both is ventilated. Dynamic stability control with dynamic traction control. You can option an M Sport package, which will give you the shadow line trim, upgraded brakes, four piston in the front with a single floating caliper in the rear. M Sport suspension with your M active exhaust. Here, you're gonna have your dual exhaust outlets. It's gonna be more of an executive blend. Power trunk lid going inside to 18.7 cubic feet of storage. You have a 12 volt right here with storage pocket on the side, another storage right there. You can split fold the rear bench at a 40-20-40 split in the back, increasing cargo to the sedan. And this is the best in class for cargo unless you go into the Sportback A7. Let's go inside, start it up so we can hear that exhaust now. Now, even though this is just a twin scroll turbo inline six cylinder, you still get some exhaust note. That's what is a nice thing about BMW. They give you the dynamics and they back the performance with a 3.0 liter BMW twin power turbo inline six cylinder, producing 335 horsepower and 331 pound feet of torque. That's paired to an eight speed automatic transmission, achieving 25 to 32 MPGs, zero to 60 at 4.9 seconds. Top speed around 130 to 155 miles per hour with a quarter mile around 14 seconds. Seconds. Now, what do these numbers entail? This is the fastest variant. It even goes up to a Mercedes E450, which the price escalates a little bit more than this. It's gonna have more torque and horsepower in the bins. This is faster in the zero to 60. Also faster than the Genesis G80 with the twin turbo V6. That has almost 400 pound feet of torque. So it shows you how much power you're getting out of a vehicle that's pretty much a sweet spot. So you don't have to go up to an M550i. You don't have to go to a full M. You're still getting your speeds quick enough and yet saving anywhere from 10 to $15,000 because this goes all the way up to an A7. Let me know in the comments what you think about the 2023 BMW 540i sedan. As we go inside, go over the tech and take this for our drive. Getting inside the mid-size 540i BMW with headroom at 40.7 inches, legroom 41.4 inches. Heated 16-way power adjustment and memory for the driver, manual cushion extension with 12-way power adjustment for the passenger, manual cushion extensions. Three-spoke steering wheel, multi-function with paddle shifters. The gauge cluster is a 12.3 digital gauge cluster. You can change that by the driving mode select or you could change it by your BC 
on the stock, which will go through an array of information for the driver. Looking in front with a heads-up display, the dashboard will have your traditional BMW setup with the wood inlays, and you get the satin aluminum gloss black here in the center, which are large 12.3 infotainment with navigation. We have pinch. We have swipe. Click into the home button here. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming, Bluetooth audio. Put it into reverse. We have a reverse camera with trajectory, front and rear parking sensors. Going down to your dual climate control, more of that wood trim that opens up to a wireless charging pad, a USB, a 12 volt, your cup holders that could probably fit about a 20 ounce, gloss black for your gear lever and around your driver mode select with your iDrive mouse. More sporty for your elbows, open up inside. It's a little bit smaller with a USB port. The door panel has the satin aluminum that goes right into the dash with the wood and your ambient lighting. One touch up and down for all your windows, soft for your elbows, a smaller storage pocket, but it opens up into the front with your trunk release. For the back seat, headroom, no issue. Legroom, 36.5 inches. Because this is the 5 Series, it's a little bit more wide, a little bit more comfortable than the 3 Series for adults in the back. Two USB-C ports, a 12 volt, two storage trays, your air vents, gloss black around the center, storage behind both of the front seats, the door panel, Get your ambient lighting with the wood and the satin aluminum. Still soft for your elbows, one touch up and down for your windows. Upgraded Harman Kardon sound system and a large storage pocket. Sitting into the center headroom, if I move back, is not a problem because the way this is structured for your interior lights and because we have a moonroof. Leg space, I'm either grazing or I'm gonna be right behind the passenger seat. We moved it back a bit so you could see the dimensions. Feet are going to be more or less on the rails of the front seat. I'm gonna be sharing butt and shoulder space. It's still a wide vehicle though, so it is doable as long as the front occupants do not move the seats all the way back. 87 horsepower more, 74 pound-feet of torque more. This is what you get. in your brakes because the geometry is not as good as a 530. However, you're getting a zero to 60 one second quicker. So you still have that dynamic fun. You get the exhaust note that comes out of it and you still have a lot of performance numbers. This goes against variants that's over $70,000. And yes, the torque is going to be more in the Audi. It's also going to be the most in the Genesis twin turbo V6 variant. That one beats all of them. However, this one is still faster, zero to 60. So stepping it up from a 530, you have an inline four cylinder twin scroll turbo. You step it up to this inline six cylinder twin scroll. So I can justify a six to $7,000 price point because I feel the performance numbers underneath this. Would I option the M Sport package? I would. And the reason why is because you're gonna get the M Sport brakes. You're getting the M Sport differential and your suspension setup. Plus you get the shadow line trim. It just makes sense to option this. The wheels, everything is going to look more aggressive for a fraction of the price of an M550i. Here we go. And you can see from maneuverability, there is absolutely no problem. It just feels very composed. The sound deadening is pretty good in the 5 Series. Obviously, as you step up the tier and you spend more money, it's gonna get a little bit more quiet, but you're also going to have an exhaust note that helps funnel things out. Another reason why to option the M Sport package. Now, there is some things I like and dislike, and that's what we're gonna talk about right now. Starting off with what I like, the increase of the price is justifiable because the whole vehicle dynamics does change. Now, for a cornering perspective, it's gonna be a little bit more happy in the sense that it'll spin out a little bit more because of the weight distribution. So if you're looking for a more tight 50-50, you want to go to the 530i. The second thing that I like about the vehicle is you're not sacrificing in ride quality. So if you're looking for that long journey drive, zero to 60 numbers under five seconds. And what does that equivalent to? Getting up onto the interstate faster so you don't have to worry and getting to wherever you need to be maybe a few seconds quicker. 
but you're not losing that in the comfort on the ride. It's still an executive scent. Now, when you go into the M5, it's a very luxurious car too. Don't get me wrong, just you're gonna feel a little bit more. The suspension is a little bit more stiff, but it's also tuned for the track. So you have to disqualify some of that because it's an everyday and a track worthy vehicle. The last thing that I like about the vehicle is we do not have the gesture control because in the five series, if you've watched prior videos of mine, every time I move my hands, it was activating the navigation, moving things around. It's a great system. However, it's not something that's error proof. Three things that I dislike is there's a lip when you're getting in and out of the car and I'm constantly hitting it. Wish it was more flat or maybe do the seat a little bit different put it a little bit more towards the doors so that way I'm not actually hitting that lip. The second thing that I dislike is the trunk release. If you do not have the key in your pocket, you can't open the trunk at all, whether the car is on or off. We have it in Sport Plus. We're at a red light. We're going to see what that 4.9 looks like on a daily. one of those vehicles that just fly underneath the radar because you don't have a lot of dynamic styling on the exterior, meaning you don't have the M Sport package. So what happens when you pull up to people in this particular car, whether it's a 530 or 540, both two of them, they're gonna think it's just a five series. The thing is quick. The last thing that I dislike is the lane keep assist because whenever you're going into a lane, you can actually hear the motor of it, like reading the road. Kind of wish it was a little bit more quiet or you just don't hear it at all because it really sounds like a motor for moving your seats. Choosing this over the 530i, this is gonna be a little bit more fun because of the dynamics that's underneath the hood. Choosing it over Audi, Mercedes, and Genesis, the same thing. Even though they have more torque and the Genesis has the most horsepower and torque, this one still will capture the moment whenever you're at a red light and you're trying to race a vehicle to the next light. It's obviously not a track driven vehicle, but it's an everyday vehicle and you still have all those luxury amenities. The power seat adjustment on the passenger side is something that I don't like because it should have the same amount as the driver, especially when you start hovering into these price points. But when you get into a vehicle like Genesis, you're not gonna have the same amount of power seat adjustments. You have to go to the G90 in which that's an awesome vehicle, but then it goes to the 7 Series because it's a longer vehicle and it's more of a backseat or chauffeur driven car. This one will be the more expensive variant, but there's reason why. Because you have that performance underneath it and if you want to sculpt it like an M550i you can do so and it's still going to be cheaper it's not going to be as fast but you got all the savings and you have an inline six cylinder twin scroll turbo instead of a V8 twin turbo engine. So you'll be saving on gas. So for longevity purposes, this is a sweet spot vehicle because the 540i just gives you that extra cushion that the 530 doesn't give you. It gives you a little bit more so than the Audi A6. If you go into the Audi A7 Sportback, that one's going to be the same engine variant, but it's a hatchback. So you're going to have a little bit more cargo because of that, but interior space because of that Sportback, you're losing head space. So to fit four or five adults in a vehicle, this ticks the box. The Genesis G80 is gonna be a little bit more cramped. You really have to go to the G90. And when you get to the Mercedes-Benz, whether the E350 or the E450, it's kind of the same thing. It's a little bit more cramped, less cargo space, and less performance numbers, but you get more horsepower and torque. Turn radius at a stop point. It's gonna get about two lanes. The steering is going to feel like every day. It isn't overly wide in the lanes. The length, it's a longer vehicle, but you have blind spot monitoring in that inline six cylinder twin scroll turbo. I like to thank BMW of Wesley Chapel for giving us this 2023 BMW 540i sedan for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, I don't know what you're waiting for. Click the next video and the subscribe button. Check out the merchandise, website, and Instagram, and everything we do here at Hawkeye Rides.